44, okay, 45, 46. Yumi is a brand that I've heard mentioned non-stop for what feels like years now, with people asking about them in my comments section or praising and recommending them in the comments section of scooter Facebook groups I'm in. So I got my hands on the Yumi Raptor to see if this $1,600 50 mile per hour scooter lives up to the hype. Well, the short answer is yes, I think the hype is real. Over the course of my testing, it has become one of my favorite electric scooters under $2,000 and absolutely crushes competitor scooters at the same price. But the long answer requires taking a look at the Raptor's specs and features, then jumping into ride quality, top speed, and range, and then comparing it with other scooters on the market. So, let's go. I did want to quickly touch on the unboxing experience to start because that really is the first impression you get of a new scooter. Yumi sends the scooter pack really well, and it was cool to see all the accessories that they send standard as well. You get a bag, phone holder, two rear view mirrors, and a tire pump, as well as a second charger so that you can fast charge the Raptor. I've never seen a scooter include this many extras for free. Jumping to the scooter itself, the design, while not crazy unique, definitely gives the impression that it is a sports scooter, a scooter that's meant to go fast. The Yumi and Raptor logos, the red accents, the height off the ground, the big suspension, and the aggressive sharp styling all contribute to this feel. A lot of the Raptor's components are familiar to me, with things like the throttle, brakes, and display being found on other high-end scooters I've ridden. Everything is high quality and has served me well on the other scooters the parts have been on. Well, everything except for these grips, pull these awful things off as soon as you get the scooter out of the box and switch them for some locking grips that won't slide around the bars. This thumb throttle style is one of my favorites and works seamlessly with the sine wave controller for buttery smooth acceleration and speed control. And uh, that's right, you heard me correctly, I said controller singular because instead of the usual dual controller configuration, the Raptor runs on a single compact custom 60 volt controller cooled by these heat sinks on the edges of the riding platform. In tandem with its dual motors, this thing can output up to 6000 watts of power. If these numbers mean nothing to you, just understand that this is a monster amount of power for a scooter at this price. I'll cover acceleration and top speed in depth a little later. While we're down here by the motors, let's talk about the tires, which have a diameter of 11 inches and a width of almost 4 inches, making them, again, monsters for the price. With the power the scooter's outputting, having the larger, wider tires is great for stability and ride cushioning at higher speeds. It's rare to see an 11-inch scooter at this price, and then again, it's rare to see such power at this price. It's cool to see Yumi setting new standards for what you can get at $1,600. Yumi offers the option of slick road tires or off-road tires, and while my Raptor is fitted with the road tires, I would love to potentially swap them out in the future, as I have been known to do a little bit of off-roading. Let me know if you'd like to potentially see a video of the scooter off-road in the future. I still got in a little time on some mild dirt trails, which, even with the slick tires, the Raptor did really well on. These tires are also tubeless, which is by far my preference, meaning no pinch flats, better resistance to puncture flats, and easier puncture repair. Moving to the suspension, you get hydraulic coil shocks with an impressive amount of travel. I love seeing hydraulic shocks and the rebound, while not adjustable, is tuned well and keeps the tires planted. These zoom hydraulic disc brakes are pretty standard at the price and perform pretty well, bringing the scooter to a stop quickly with the option to lock up the wheels in emergency braking situations. The battery comes in two sizes. The cheaper version of the Raptor has a 27 amp hour battery with standard cells. This is quite a large battery for the price, and while the $300 battery upgrade only gives you three more amp hours of battery life, you do get Samsung cells in the larger battery, so if that's something you value or you really feel like you want the most range possible, then upgrading is an option. Yumi claims that you can get 56 miles of range with the smaller battery and 60 miles with the larger battery riding at an average speed of 18 miles an hour. I'm testing the larger battery version and if you ride in the top mode constantly, like I do, you'll see closer to 25 to 30 miles of range depending on your weight. This still is fantastic range at the price and should be plenty for just about anyone or any use case, especially with the option to ride in a lower mode or ride a little bit slower and extend that range when you need to. The scooter has an IP rating of 54, making it usable in the rain, through puddles, and off-road. Just don't leave it out to soak in the rain. Atop the battery, you get a large riding platform as well as a nice rear tail. You have plenty of width for a lot of different riding stances and a tail long enough that you can almost put your whole foot on it. You get a tacky mat that serves you well to keep your feet in place, and while I am a little partial to skateboard grip tape, this mat works really well. Adding to the stability of the scooter is a beefy stem clamp with four of the quick clamp bolts that can be tightened down. 
We have been seeing better and better versions of the vertical locking style coming out on these higher end scooters. And that's typically my preference as it makes it quicker to fold down the scooter. However, the single large tab of the Raptor stem lock is definitely the way to do horizontal stem locks like this. And it keeps the stem rock solid. Portability wise, this is obviously not intended to be a scooter that is super easy to haul around or carry, but considering the performance the Raptor packs, its weight of 97 pounds seems very reasonable. Folding down, it sticks in a car with just a bit of effort, though it would have been nice to see a folding lock to keep the handlebars from sliding around when folded down. This has a max rider weight of 330 pounds, making it very big dog friendly. The suspension's adjustable preload and the insane amount of power the scooter outputs means that even the largest riders will find that the Raptor can handle them quite easily. The adjustable handlebar stem is also perfect for dialing in the most comfortable ride for different rider sizes. The cockpit as a whole is set up really well with nice wide 735mm handlebars, some of the widest bars I've tested on an electric scooter. This helps with control and stability and also leaves you plenty of space for accessories. The display is the same one that is on the InMotion RS, a large color display with NFC technology. You get the usual information with the speed being large and centered. The display is actually quite accurate to your actual speed, even showing speed about 1 to 2 miles per hour slower than GPS, which is unusual. Usually scooter displays dramatically overestimate your speed, being off by as much as 5 to 10 miles an hour at the top speed sometimes, so the Raptor being this accurate is refreshing. The Raptor comes with two NFC chips, which can be used to unlock the scooter, or you can just enter a code to unlock it. I love that you get the security and ease of the NFC chip without being forced to use it. I already covered the throttle and the hydraulic disc brakes, but I will mention that these brake levers can be operated easily with just one finger, allowing you to keep a tight grip on the handlebars when braking. This is just one of the many reasons why I prefer hydraulic brakes over cable-driven brakes. This uniquely comes with both a high and low mounted headlight, making it one of the few scooters that I would feel comfortable riding for extended periods in the dark without installing extra lights. You also get rear and front turn signals which strobe, making them very hard to miss for cars around you. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff and talk speed, acceleration, and other aspects of performance. You get three riding level modes, as well as single and dual motor modes, and I mean, unless you're trying to save battery, just throw this thing into mode three, dual motor, and let it rip. The nice part is that the sine wave controller allows for really precise speed control, so you can have this scooter in the highest riding mode, but still ride at a lower speed. It has a claim top speed of 50 miles an hour, and I saw GPS speeds as high as 48 miles an hour when riding around, however the scooter definitely felt like it had a bit more to give, and probably could be pushed to 50 miles an hour with a long enough straight. It flies up to 40 and even 42 miles an hour with no issues, but takes time, a more compact aggressive riding stance, and a bit of guts to reach the highest speeds. Past that 40 or 42 mile per hour mark, any imbalance in the wheels or bouncing of the suspension can cause instability fairly quickly, so I would advise you to ride with a lot of caution over 40 miles an hour. Acceleration will obviously vary drastically based on your weight, but for me, a 205 pound rider, the Raptor did its 0 to 30 mile an hour pull in right around 6 seconds, a great time for a scooter at any price, and absolutely ripping for $1600, nothing at the price really comes close. However, as crazy as it sounds, it doesn't feel like the Raptor is making full use of all of its 6,000 watts of power, almost like it's holding back to protect the rider. I would have expected a bit more torque for the wattage, but it's still blistering fast and a ton of fun. I did check to see if there were any P settings that I could change to further crank up the acceleration, and I even reached out to Yumi about it, but they couldn't provide any information and I couldn't find anything. So if you have this scooter and know if it's possible to crank up the acceleration, then leave a comment down below. The size and weight of the Raptor sits in such a sweet spot for handling and ride comfort, giving you the weight and stability of a larger, heavier scooter while not feeling large or sluggish when carving or cornering. Put simply, this is a fast, fun, adrenaline pumping scooter to ride. The few scooters under $2,000 that manage to get up to 50 miles an hour or close all seem to have some pretty big compromises, but the Raptor delivers that true 50 mile per hour performance without any of the caveats. So I finally get why there are so many Yumi fans, and this will surely be a scooter I recommend and ride for a long time, and I would love to review more Yumi scooters in the future, so if there's a specific model you'd like to see, again, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and if you want to check out the Raptor, it will be linked down below in the description, and I will see you in the next one.